No really, mate. Five two goals, excitement. Yeah. More to come, though. Need more. Hundred um, percent. The ball was moving a lot quicker in the first half. Definitely. I um, I really enjoyed just the quickness of it, and I thought Ugarte against the Premier League side. At the end of the day, you might think it's Leicester's B, B team or whatever it is, but I I don't care, bro. I remember Coventry. I remember Newport, whatever they were called, Newbury or whatever. Newport, yeah. Whatever. That's what. This, all the, listen. So we were struggled. We struggled against teams to put teams away. Four goals before half time. I'm happy. And that first one from Casimiro. <laughs> I, I gave him a nickname in it, Casinap, because I always think he dives about too much. It's like he's taking a nap on the middle of a football pitch. But today, I thought he was scintillating. By far, the man of the match for Manchester United. Um, Agreed. Goals, and, and I thought we, we, we passed it quicker. I just thought we moved it quicker. And the goals, like the ball from Casemiro for the second goal to Diego Dolot, first, first touch, boom, across for Garnacho, bang, 2-0. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I just, I'm just glad that that cloud that was sat on all of us for what we saw from last season to this season, it's just a bit of breather in it. It's like... You know what I mean? That's that's how I feel. I'm yeah. not getting carried away. I'm not getting giddy, but I just feel like I got to see four goals before half time at Old Trafford. <laughs> like, it's funny when you say it like that. It's like everyone would look at it and go, "What? Why, why is he getting carried away?" But that's how starved we've been. Exactly. So at the end of the day, in terms of the larger thing about Van Nistelrooy, I thought he got an amazing reception. Obviously, like he was always going to do. And I thought, he did, I didn't see him once go to the bench. He's just stood on the halfway line. Kicking every ball, wasn't it? Kicking every ball, like instructing, talking, communicating. And I thought the players responded. I thought Ugarte, one of his better games for United. Um, today. Good now that Amarin's coming in and Ugarte starts to get a bit of game time. This I mean, Rui's not really going to be thinking about Amarin. He's thinking about himself. This He's now it. got three games because it looks it. like Amarin's going to be international due, uh, international week when he okay. comes in. So now we know where we stand. This is it. Chelsea's is massive, isn't it? This because is it. we can't ignore these games and wait no, for Amarin. No. They need to react to Ruud van Nistelrooy now exactly. and get these wins. But also, like, play for them. Like, like he's going to watch the games, isn't he? Like, he's going to be exactly. watching our games, isn't he? Like, yeah. And the people, these coaches, they're going to be making notes. You know what I mean? You are on trial almost, you know, for the new manager. The thing about somebody asked me what I think he's going to do well. I, I wish and pray he does well. I wish and pray that he comes here and stamps his authority and gets us playing in a way but for me I'm always like give us something to get behind if you give us something to get behind Amarin we will be there with you 100% but the biggest thing is that I hope the more than ever, anything he comes here with his eyes open wide open Manchester United is not a sport in Lisbon this is not the Portuguese league this is that Man United is a different animal the Premier League is a different beast at the end of the day Everything when I see it, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a bit insecure because there are so many overlaps with Ten Hag. He's the next upcoming coach. Ten Hag was that next upcoming coach. All of this, and I feel a little bit like, you know, I've been looking at articles, doing research, doing, do, doing shows about how he wants to play, but the biggest thing for me is that can he rise to the occasion? And, and Ineos now, to me, I'm, I've been on Ineos fraud watch for a long, long time, man. They've not impressed me. They wasted 25% of a season. Um, well, they could have just shook hands with Eric Ten Hag in the summer and said, see you later. They got rid of everybody that was there when he first came. So the only person they didn't get rid of was, was Ten Hag. And they wasted our time. They wasted our, honestly, it's blood, sweat and tears, man. Because that's what it is supporting this football club in the last 13 years. Do you feel like there's an element now now that they've, they've accepted their mistake? They've taken it upon. I know you're upset. I know you're angry that we didn't do it. I was the same. I thought he needed to go in the summer, but it's done. Yeah. We can't look back now. We can't keep looking back at what yeah, wasn't. Yeah. We have to look forward. Yeah. Is this team good enough this season to accomplish anywhere near where we should be? And I'm talking top four or even winning that Europa League with Amarim in charge. Well, with the players that we have, we should be in the race for top four. We should be in the race for top four because we definitely don't have players that should be 14th in the Premier League. No, we don't. Like, like, and that to me is just about cohesion. It's about putting a clear uh, plan and a, and a game model, as Ten Hag would say, but really laying down the foundations and how they want to play, becoming harder, harder to beat. If you look at it on the table, to be fair, we're not that far in terms of points. Seven you know I mean? from fourth. Exactly. So at the end of the day, if that's what two... 
we're asking Villa and all these other teams to lose maybe two and for us to go on a, on a run. But at the end of the day, the most important thing for me, even out of Europe, Adam, genuinely, right? I want the manager to stamp his authority, to stamp his plan, so that when we look and go, right, this is what Unai, well, not Unai, but this is what Ruben Amarin is. This is the, the type of style that he wants to play. And give us something to get behind. Give us something for us to get excited about, to get off our seats. And I promise you, you would have that, that place jumping. We are starved. That's why I can allow myself to, to get excited tonight after four goals because I'm like, well, I, I, I don't see it. I've not been seeing it. But he's got to think what he's coming into. He, he, to me, he must know what he's coming into because no other football club in the world gets scrutinised more than Manchester United. No other club, no other club. In the English-speaking world, in terms of how far it goes, the news about Manchester United is everywhere, right? Everybody eats off Manchester United, everybody in terms of the corporation, the media, all of that, the phone-ins, it's all about Manchester United. Everybody's hate watching us. Everybody's been enjoying us, enjoying this downfall. So for me, he's got to come in and he's got to be backed. He's got to come be backed. On. He's got to be backed in the way that this is their guy. So they've got to go with it all in now, all in with him. They have to do go all in with him. And for him, in terms of the fan base, please show us something to get behind. Show us something for us to put a hat on and go, right, this is a journey we're going on. This is an adventure we're going to go on. And promise you, if you do that, you will have the whole city. You will have, to, listen, we've got what, how many we've got? We've got a billion fans around the world. You will make a lot of people happy if, if he get, gets us on a journey to get back. And that's why I'm not even asked about the top four. I actually think, get out of Europa League. Honestly, that's what I think. I think we need a season without European football or chasing it. I'd rather you start building the blocks to get in Manchester United challenge for a league title, Adam. We've not been, we've not challenged properly. No. Oli was 13 points, Jose was 19 points. That's not a challenge. That is not a challenge. We need somebody. In three years' time, Omar Barada came out with a statement and said he wants Manchester United to be winning a Premier League title in the 150th anniversary of Manchester United. That's 2028. Mm -hmm. So, if you give him three years, help him build a bloody team. No, I didn't. Couldn't have said it any better, mate.